the computer can be the hub of a multimedia, multi-sensory idea processor that you and your children can use to create, edit, and communicate your ideas and your knowledge about any subject. What subject do you want your children to learn? What ideas excite you? What are the powerful concepts that you want to communicate? Imagine yourself as the conductor of an orchestra. The computer is your conductor's baton, and the instruments of the orchestra are video cameras, keyboard synthesizers, and stereo receivers. Of course, there's a big catch to all this. You can't make the computer do anything without a program. And without any commercial software, who has to write these programs? You do, you and your children. Writing your own software can be an impossible hurdle or a wonderful opportunity. Many of the established software companies are playing wait and see toward the new Amiga and ST computers. This is a chance for you and your kids to be innovative and creative. You can get a hold of one of these machines and write a program that accomplishes something you need in your classroom or home. There are three reasons for doing this. There are lots of programming languages available on these machines, so they make powerful programming laboratories. Once you have created your own programs, you can use them in your own home or classroom. Due to the vacuum of software temporarily surrounding these machines, you might be able to sell your programs commercially. Whatever you do, think long and hard before you spend any money at all. And don't buy these machines just because they have pretty graphics or sound like a saxophone if you push the right buttons. The newest computers, Amigas, STs, or whatever, are the state-of-the-art in computer technology. But ask yourself if you really need state-of-the-art. After all, if you're just making a trip to the local grocery store for a quart of milk, which machine is more appropriate? your beat-up old station wagon, or a stoked-up 20-wheel Mack truck. Until next time, I'm Fred Dignazio. In earlier shows, we've looked at many of the educational applications for the computer language logo, and at the storm of debate and controversy that have surrounded logo ever since it left scientists' labs five years ago. This week, we'll go behind the scenes back into scientists' labs to get a glimpse of Logo's future. We'll look at three products that may never make it to your classroom or home, but which have tremendous potential for education. The first language we'll look at is 3D Logo, developed by Hiroyoshi Goto of Uni Limited in Tokyo, Japan. Currently, 3D Logo only runs on Japanese computers, but plans are to introduce it to the U.S. sometime in the near future. If anything characterizes the current versions of Logo, it is the little triangular turtle that a child can program to move about on the computer screen. The turtle carries a pen, and as it moves, it draws pictures. 3D Logo takes us out of the flat two-dimensional turtle world into a rich new world with three dimensions, just like the real world. In 3D Logo, you can control an aerial turtle that darts about through three-dimensional space like a rocket ship in Star Wars. A child can program the turtle to draw three-dimensional objects of any shape or description. Then he can look at the object from any perspective. The result is like a computer movie that a child can create with simple programming commands. With a tool like this, children, for example, could build a house, then build a person, then walk that person into the house and see things through the person's eyes. Dance instructors could create dancers leaping and whirling through space. Coaches could create movies of games, strategies, and plays to help them teach their athletes. Then each athlete could watch the play from his or her perspective. Have you ever played with Lego building blocks? Wasn't it surprising the way you could combine simple Lego blocks the size of your fingernail into amazing and complex buildings, bridges, creatures, and machines? Today's children may someday get the opportunity to bring their Lego creations to life, thanks to the efforts of Mitch Resnick and Michael Loco at the Lego and Logo Project at MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Children who visit their lab use procedures they write in a new, enhanced version of Logo to 
to activate and control the tiny gears and motors in their Lego inventions. Kids learn best when they're enjoying and motivated by the things that they're work by the things they're working on. And this is something that works both the Lego and Logo. And the two systems really complement each other. Uh, in some ways, they're very similar. Both Lego and Logo compass types of building blocks. The building blocks of Lego are sort of obvious. With Logo, it's the building blocks of writing procedures. And in both, kids are learning a basic underlying idea that from starting with a lot of simple building blocks, you can build complex and interesting things. Two girls built a, an amusement park, and all of the environment was developed. Uh, when the kids build their own device, uh, the, uh, their interest in controlling it is, is pretty high, so there's a real motivation to jump on the computer and learn the procedures to do that. While I was at MIT, I also talked with Hal Abelson and Andy DeSessa, two Logo developers, for changing the purpose of Logo. And they're doing it by inventing a new computer language called Boxer. When I first heard of Boxer, visions of boxers like Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Michael Spinks danced in my mind. I wondered, will boxers replace turtles on a child's computer screen? Well, I was wrong. The name Boxer comes from boxes that appear on the computer screen. You can open the boxes up, and for the first time, you can see and control everything going on inside the computer. Well, Boxer is is what we, we think of as, as the next logo. Although I, should, I think that the present logo is, is quite serviceable for, for a pretty large number of years. But when you look beyond that, and you think about the kinds of computers people will have in the 1990s, if you, if you imagine oh, opening up a computer and, and it working as an interactive book that's full of text and simulation programs and graphics, and then you imagine that a teacher should be able to sit down and, and write that book, uh, essentially as teachers now make worksheets, you come to the conclusion that Logo simply is not, is not powerful enough, not integrated enough, and not easy enough to approach for that to happen. And Boxer is meant to, is meant to do that. It's, a, it's an integrated computer system in which you can uh, look at databases, in which you can edit text, in which you can move around graphics, and in which you can do the familiar kinds of Logo programming. But, uh, all put together in a much more powerful environment. And we think it's, on the one hand, more powerful than Logo, and on the other hand, simpler. Because I think we've learned a lot about designing languages since we made Logo, and we're trying to put that into Boxer. Maybe the most fundamental value that we've tried to uh, propagate with Logo and now with Boxer is what I call uh, democratizing technology. Uh, we're trying to make uh, computers and programming and all of this kind of technical stuff something that everybody can use. And one of our, one our, one of our main goals with Boxer is to make it useful for teachers in, in their everyday jobs so that they're not learning it just for their students but uh, for themselves as well. In our peek into the future, we've seen a logo which can take our children from a two-dimensional world to a three-dimensional world. We've seen a logo which can free them from the screen completely and return them to the world of real machines and real inventions. And now with Boxer, we've seen how logo is evolving from a teaching language for children into a powerful, all-purpose tool that could be useful to everyone. Our glimpse into the future may or may not come true, but it does show some thrilling possibilities on the logo frontier.